I want to show you this project that we've been working on on and off for years now. We call it the FIO table, and it's basically just a TV embedded in a table, but it's so much more than that. It's an entire gaming system platform that you could build a game for today if you wanted to. Let me show you how cool this thing is, and then we'll get into what issues we've had releasing it. At its core, the idea is a gaming system that you control with your phone. Each game uses a custom controller that's served up to your device without having to install any kind of app. To do this, you start by scanning the QR code, which takes you to the FIO website. You then enter in one of the digits on the marquee app, which then takes you to the active games controller. In this instance, it's the marquee app, which allows you to launch games that are installed on the system. To launch a game, we simply tap and it will launch the game on the system. At that point, the controller will automatically transition to the current games controller. This is all done in the browser, so you don't have to install any apps to get this to work. Our goal is to create a social gaming experience, particularly at a public venue like a restaurant. Sit down, order your food, eat, and play some games together. Typically, we've run this on an NVIDIA Shield because of the low cost and high performance of the device. Unfortunately, it's stuck on Android 11, so there, it is kind of an aging device at this point. The system will run on PC as well as Linux, though, so the hardware under this could be anything. To get this all running under the hood, there's a bunch of different technology that is running everything. The device that has the FIO server is actually a Node.js server that is handling TCP communication between the game and the server itself. That makes it so then the game can be made in Unreal, Unity, a native game, it could be whatever you want as long as you can communicate over TCP. The server then has a web server that is hosting up WebSocket communication. So when your phone connects to the device, it will communicate over web sockets back and forth. The game itself, when it launches, it will send the controller as a zip file to the device. The server will then extract that and then host up the controller as a website. That way when the phone launches, it can just get directed to the web server that is running on the FIO server. In the case that you are not directly connected to the internet, the FIO server also connects to a proxy server up in the cloud that will relay all of your information back and forth between the devices, making the process of joining a game very streamlined. We've approached all sorts of different business model strategies with this. Advertisement is likely the best way to go with this. Uh, most restaurants probably aren't going to pay for a table that they then have to have internet and power access to and manage. So if we can provide a free table that we can just leverage as an advertisement platform, then that's probably our likely best bet for making some kind of revenue off of this system. We have considered other strategies like having somebody buy the table outright for stuff like D&D &D maps would be, make a great situation for this kind of a table. We've also considered subscription plans, uh, so then you can have constant games coming to the TV. Maybe it's something that you have in your house and you get a game every month. So the system does come with some downsides. Latency is the biggest issue. So there are some games that are more real-time that aren't gonna work the best. Card games work great, light levels of uh, real timeness is all right. So racing games can kind of work, especially if you're directly connected to the wireless. But otherwise, turn-based games are pretty much the king here. The other downside a little bit is that since people can sit all around the table, you kind of have to deal with split screens or have everything fully top down with no angle. Otherwise, it will skew with the perspective that the other players have. You also have the issue of the cell phone not having a lot of haptic feedback. You can use the vibration and that helps significantly, but it doesn't have the tactileness of a typical game controller. A way to get around that though is the system has a way of abstracting your phone input to the game itself. So you could still connect a gamepad directly to the system and use that in its place. All right, so where do we go from here? Well, 
we can just keep continuing on where we're going. Try to get a few more of these and get them into some actual restaurants and give it a try. We could potentially start looking at investors, but until we have good solid numbers on how the system is performing, that's going to be a difficult venture to, to tackle. We could potentially look at different directions for the platform as a whole. For a small example would be that if we partnered up with a, a golf course or something, we could have a mini golf on the floor that you would like walk over and you could connect and play a mini golf game at the airport. Something like that. There's, there's tons of fun venture ideas to think of through the, with that. For now, we're just gonna continue working on it, improve it as we can. If you're interested in making a game or you have some ideas that you'd love to see with the system, please reach out, let us know. There is a dis Discord in the description. We'd love to hear from you. So and, until next time.